So this is the lenses lab. And uh, I suspect you haven't gotten two lenses. If you have, fine. If you haven't, uh, here it is again. Uh, here it is for the first time. But uh, here's a, what's called a double convex lens, uh, sometimes also called a converging lens. And the reason it's called a converging lens is if you look over here, this is the law of refraction. And it says the sine of the incident angle divided by the sine of the refracted angle is equal to N2 over N1. N2 is the index refraction of glass, and the N1 is the index refraction of air. N1 is, uh, N1 is 1, because air has an index refraction of just about exactly 1. Uh, and N2 is a number something like uh, 1.5. OK, so if you look at this equation here, this law of refraction, it says that the, the ratios of these signs is, e, is the same as the ratio of these numbers. In other words, this, the sine of this angle is one and a half times bigger than the sine of that angle. And you know, uh, I mean, a sine looks like this. A and it, it's roughly, roughly linear. Simply, the sine of a bigger angle is a bigger number. That's really all you need to worry about. So this number is bigger than this number which means this angle is bigger than this angle, which means that when the light goes into this, this is the top of the convex lens, when the light goes into the, this, it comes out at a smaller angle than it went in at. It's refracted. Okay, and you'll go over this more carefully in, in class. So uh, that means that this angle is smaller than this angle, and on the way out, conversely, when it's, since it's going from something with an index refraction of 2 to an index refraction of 1, this angle becomes bigger, measured from the normal, uh, measured from the normal, uh, than, uh, than the incident angle. So it's bent this way on the way in, it's bent that way on the way out. So if I trace, if I take one of these rays, let's not take a, a green ray, I guess, uh, and send it through this convex lens, it does something like this. And here's another one down here, it does something like this. And this ray will do something like that. And this ray will do something like this. They all, by the, by the law of refraction, they all converge at a point which is called the focal point. And this distance from the lens to the focal point is called the focal length. Okay. And uh, the first lab, the first of the several labs, uh, parts of the lab that we're going to do is to find the focal length of the of this lens, which means where do all these parallel rays, these are called paraaxial rays, Paraaxial rays. These paraaxial rays all converge at a point called a focal point, the focal length. So we want the focal length of this lens. Uh, these lenses have what are called a positive focal length, uh, a lens that's a diverging lens that's thicker on the edges than the, in the center. Uh, is a, it has a focal length that's defined as negative. And again, that's getting way ahead of the game. So uh, we're just going to study these lenses and what you can do with lenses and how we work with uh, the quantities associated with lenses. OK, so experiment number one is to shine light from a distant object, which will be a, a light bulb uh, that's several meters away, probably sitting over there. Uh, and then the rays will coming in paraaxially, and they will converge at the focal point. And so all you have to do is find where the the light bulb produces a really teeny tiny bright little spotlight bulb uh, there and measure the distance from the center of the lens uh, and we'll show you the equipment uh, to where the, where the rays converge. Okay. That's a very rough calculation for the focal length. In part two, we're going to do a better job. So part two, uh, let me erase this and uh, put the geometry on for part two. Uh, okay, so part two. Is, is another uh, attempt to get not only the uh, 
focal length, but also what's called the magnification. Okay, there. I I think we only need two standard. These are standard rays. The 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 uh, purplish one and the uh, the green one are standard rays. The two standard rays are the ray that goes through the lens that's paraaxial. We know what happens to that. It goes through the focal point and just keeps going. Okay, the other ray, the blue ray, has nothing to do with uh, recordings. Uh, the blue ray goes through the lens, and it, it goes through the lens pretty much right here, where the lens is perpendicular to the ray. And of course, the sine, the sine of zero degrees, this angle is measured from the normal, is zero, which means nothing happens. So this ray goes straight through, basically. This is provided this is a small object. So uh, this object is going to be supplied by a, a, a lit up pattern. And it won't look like a little arrow. It'll look like some lines and circles. But you'll see that later. So the, where these two rays intersect, which is right there, that's where the image forms. So P is the object distance. And Q is the image distance where these two rays, the ray that goes straight through the lens, through the middle of the lens, and the ray that's, that's bent or kinked, is a better word, kinked and goes through the focal point, which we learned from part one, uh, where those two rays intersect or converge, that's where the object forms. So uh, we're looking for a couple of things. We're looking for the focal length, it's given by this formula here, which is lens maker's formula. 1 over P plus 1 over Q is 1 over F. It kind of sounds like uh, capacitors in series and resistors in parallel or something like that. Remember those formulas? Uh, they still work for this. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, we can find the focal length much more accurately because we can measure these distances much more accurately with a meter stick. Uh, and so we get a better value for the focal length than we got for the first part, which is OK. It's kind of crude, but uh, we've got a value. We can compare those two values and see this one's the better one, I'm sure, but they should be pretty similar to each other. And you can do a little error analysis on uh, uh, how much error is in both of them, and hopefully the error ranges will overlap. So the magnification is defined as the image height, which is h prime over the object height, which is h. So that's the image height divided by the object height. And you can see some, from these similar triangles that the, if the image is farther away from the lens than the object, this is going to be bigger than that, because we got similar triangles. This one's smaller than this one. Uh, this triangle here compared to this triangle here this distance is greater than this, so this height is greater than that. Okay, so that's one way to tell what the magnification is. Uh, is the image height divided by the object height? We'll have a scale that you can tell uh, how high the object is. Uh, and also, the magnification is given by minus q over p. So check both of these out. Which, what do you get for a magnification for the image height divided by the object height and the image distance divided by the object distance? The minus sign means that the image is inverted, which it is. So that's part two. It gives you a better value for the focal length and also gives you uh, the magnification of a small object on the other side of the lens. So uh, here's the experiment we're going to do for this. Uh, the object is going to be uh, a little lit up pattern uh, with millimeter lines on it or millimeter marks on it. And the image is going to be formed over here on a screen with some lines on it, millimeter separated lines. So you can measure how high this object is 
and how this object is uh, given. Uh, these are millimeter spaces. So if this is three millimeters and that's one millimeter, the magnification is three. And that means that this distance is going to be three times this distance. So we're going to set, uh, we're going to set this screen at 100 centimeters. Move the lens around until you get a sharp image here and measure this distance and this distance and calculate using lenses, using lens maker's formula, uh, the, uh, the magnification uh, by solving for Q over P. These two should be equal. See how close you come. This is probably, since Q and P can be measured much more carefully than these image heights, which are pretty small, uh, this is going to be probably a better answer. But you can determine that by determining how well you can position this lens and uh, what the error and the positioning is on the lens. Because that's part two. We'll give you both the focal length and two shots at the magnification dif in different ways. So we'll do that for 100 centimeters, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, and that's it, centimeters. And then we're going to actually graph that to get a very good value for the focal length. Now part three, uh, we'll show you how to do part three, but I can't show you what part three looks like because it forms a virtual image. If you ever used a magnifying glass to read something a little more carefully, uh, you see that it forms a, an upright, that is erect image, and it's bigger than the writing, which is why you use it. So only you can see that because what we, we say the image is virtual. Uh, it, it really doesn't exist there, it just exists in your eyeball. And uh, no one else can see it. You can't, you can't project it on a screen. It's not really there. It just looks like it's there. And so we see, we measure uh, this distance between the lens and the, and the uh, object. And then this distance here, is, we try to keep that at 25 centimeters, which is the distance of closest vision, uh, not my closest vision, your closest vision, because my eyes don't focus that closely anymore. Uh, but the distance of closest vision is just simply taken as a standard 25 centimeters. You can probably see things at 15 or 20 centimeters uh, clearly. Uh, but So we want to measure this, this magnification and calculate the magnification using uh, the formula magnification is uh, 1 plus uh, 25 over the focal length. You will have measured the focal length of this lens. It's either roughly 10 centimeters or 20 centimeters. Those are the lenses we have to work with. So the magnification can be calculated by this. This is the distance of closest vision. Typically, try to keep it at 25 centimeters. I have a little sawed off quarter meter stick, which is 25 centimeters, for you to kind of judge the distance how far away uh, from the uh, paper your eye should be. So this is the what's called a lateral magnification, and you can calculate that, and you can also measure that by looking at the, uh, we will have some lines on a piece of paper that you can look through and see how, mu how much more they're magnified compared to lines that are not magnified. You've got two eyes, you have to look at with one eye, just like any lizard can, uh, at, the, at the screen, uh, at, the, at the paper that's magnified, and with the other eye, at the paper that's not magnified. So, you can do it. Okay, so uh, in the four, fourth part of the experiment, we're going to build a telescope. Uh, there's going to be lines on the board over there uh, that are probably 10 centimeters apart. Uh, it doesn't matter what they are, as long as they're equally spaced. And... Uh, so your, your, your eyeball is going to be looking through the 10 centimeter focal length lens at about 110 centimeters and, the, and also through the, the 20 centimeter focal length lens at about 80 centimeters. These distances here are 20 plus 10, which is approximately 30, uh, and that's the sum of the focal lengths of these two lenses. It turns out, and you may have already noticed this in part two of the experiment, that the closer you get to the focal length, the focal point of a lens, the, the bigger the magnification. You saw that if you looked at your data in, the, in part two, you would see that. So 
Anyway, uh, so we get the greatest magnification uh, for the uh, telescope when these two lenses are uh, apart, a distance equal to the, roughly the sum of their focal lengths. And then we look at, the, uh, look at the, uh, some lines for reference on the screen a, a distance away, uh, several meters away. We compare those lines that you see through the telescope to the lines you see with your, with your other eyeball. You look at, at the lines on the board with one eye, it's not that hard. It's not as hard as it sounds. And you look at through. You, you look through the telescope, uh, and see how far apart the lines are in the telescope. If they're four times farther apart than they are in the real world, with your with your naked eye looking straight at the board, uh, then the magnification is four. Very simple.